Okay, so back at this car now. I'm going to do some suspension stuff on it, lower it, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to show you guys what the budget's at at the moment. It's actually quite high. So that's actually not accurate. Um, in total, I think I haven't put in the seat trim that I bought, but I'm pretty sure I'm at 25 grand. So it's just starting to cost a lot of money, like most cars do. So I'm going to be doing that stuff. Sway bars, um, changing those control arms, I need to do lower ball joints, um, bushes, that sort of thing, change the springs, I've got some uh, lowered springs somewhere, I don't know where I put them, but I've got some rear ones as well, new shocks to the back. So as you can see, I've already done the, the steering side of things. And these are where the floor pans have been welded in. So these areas here that have got real bad surface rust, I'm just going to wire brush them and put some black paint over that so it doesn't get any worse. I'll do that on both sides. This is a cross member that um, Rodney from Protective Coatings Newcastle donated to the car, even powder coated it for me. So it's a Turbo 400 cross member and it looks really neat under the car. So the factory exhaust is, I believe it's a two, I think it's two and a half inch. It's a two and a half inch single system. So it's nothing special, but I'm probably just gonna leave that on there um, until I get it registered. And then I'll probably um, either do a twin Twin system or a single, probably just a single three inch, I'd say. It's just easier. And they sound good, so I might just do a single three inch under this car. Um, might even have to pull this tank out as well. Well, not maybe, I have to pull that tank out because um, it's going to be full of all sorts of stuff. It's been sitting for so long, so I'm going to have to take that fuel tank out. I might do that in this video as well. So I'll take the fuel tank out um, and we're going to go through and do suspension stuff. So I'm going to stop talking about it and I'm going to get stuck into it. So this is my uh, Ryobi, which is now a two-piece Ryobi. So I dropped the hoist down and it hit right back here and it snapped the drill. Impact, sorry. But it still works. So it's flexible, but it works. All right, so 20 minutes later, I have taken all the stuff out. I just unbolted the sway bar, removed the springs, removed the shocks. These shocks are actually all right. They weren't actually leaking either. So I could have used them. They still work good. But they were pretty cheap to buy these shocks. So I just bought new ones. These are fatter too. Shouldn't matter though. That's the height difference between the springs. So these are the KHRL 26 King Springs. So they're labelled as uh, super low. So I bought super low for the back and the springs I got for the front are actually ultra low. But I have this little um, bush that goes on top which probably adds a bit of height. So I'm hoping that them springs and the other springs will just work out the same height. So we're going to put them in, them in and move ahead. So this has either, ha either had a, um, a leak and axle seal, which I think is most likely. That's what all this dirt and oil is here. So down the track, I'll um, do something about that. But for now, I'm just going to put all this in. I'm, I'm going to end up putting a, um, a good LSD center or a spool or something in this. So probably an LSD because I don't really want it chirping around corners. So, but I'll do that after the build's done. So for now. I'll just do all this and then when I do change the center, I'll um, probably do the axle seals because I dare say that um, this one here is buggered looking at all that oil. So, all right, so it's the next day now. Um, I got sick of it last night, so I left it at that. 
but I've got the new springs in, new shocks, and the sway bar. So now I'm going to put wheels on it and put it on the ground and see how low it actually is. Alright, so that's how low it sits now. I'm not a fan of these wheels at all, so they will be getting replaced, but that's a good sort of height there. And the front is still 4x4 four four height because it has the standard springs and no motor. Much better. Much more gangster looking. I didn't show you guys, but I actually got the door trim for the car too. So I just got this trim off um, a guy in Sydney. She don't know his business. But I got a nice black door trims for all the doors. Got the new rubbers inside and out. This thing is starting to look really good in here. I'm waiting on the seat trim and the console. Um, I'll figure that out when the time comes. I'll either paint it or just buy a rare spares one. I'm not too sure yet, but I'm not sure if I should get Venetians for the back or not. I've heard mixed stories on Venetians, so I don't know if I should get them, but I've heard that they rattle in the wind and stuff and they're quite annoying. But they do kind of look cool, so don't know. But um, that's all. Um, I'm going to uh, start on the front end now. Alright, so I got the front springs out, shocks out, popped um, the upper and the lower ball joints. The way I do this, um, undo the bottom nut a little bit, undo the top nut a little bit, not completely off. And then I always bust the top ball joint first. This is if I'm trying to replace both, but pop that one first usually by tapping the side of it with a hammer and then when it pops I then go to the bottom one and I usually turn the wheel fully locked that way and then I just belt the hell right here with a hammer and just keep whacking it with a lump hammer this lump hammer in particular just beat the hell out of it and then pop, 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 and then it'll go boing. And that'll do the bottom one. So, once they're both popped, you can undo them, pull it all apart. Happy days. So, these springs are just the original springs. Everything's pretty crusty under here. I had a look at the, um, the wheel bearings and actually don't look too bad. I could probably do with being replaced. Rotors are pretty um, average as well, but they've got a bit of meat on them. And the brake pads look like they've been replaced as well, so... If they work, they work. It's just one less job to do. They ideally need to be pulled down and recode though. Um, so I'm going to take this lower control arm off. Undo it completely. Um, and then I'm going to have another fun job of trying to get this ball joint out, put a new one in. I've also got two new bushes for up here and they're a pain to install but I'll get two of those in. I'll just undo this top, the upper control arm. And I've already got two here that have been recode that were off McFry originally so I can just put that them straight on. Just going to save me some time. So chuck them on and get that bottom one done, put the lowered springs in and get it back down and yeah, I suppose then we can move on to the fuel tank or something. So right here is the backyard special for removing the bushes. So I just applied heat to around this area here just so it'll expand a little bit. And then give them a solid whack from in there. Boom! And actually come out quite easily with heat. Without heat it was near impossible. A bit of heat made it nice and easy. So all the ball joints out. 
So I'm going to clean this mess up and give them a really good clean. Maybe even lick a paint. See how we go. And put the new bushes and ball joints in. So I tried to tell myself to paint them in that video that I just did because I was hoping to motivate myself to paint them but I can't be bothered. So I'm just going to beat the bushes in and put them back in the car. So I'm just going through my um, crank. This is like my hole punch hydraulic device thing. But I'm just getting out this thing here because it fits nice over the back of the ball joint. So I'm just going to heat up this area to make it expand a little bit. And then put that in place. Should only take one whack of the hammer. Get those in. And they're a lot harder. But we'll see how we go with them. So this little trick here works first go like really good so I'm um, just doing the same sort of stuff heating up this area making it expand um, this is just the um, metal thing that fits perfectly over the edge of it so I can hit that with a hammer um, that is just there to it's just a pin to help center it really just slides in there fits very well so I literally after I heat it up I just drop that in there like that and then flog that with a hammer and I just did that on the other side and surprise I actually got it first go straight in so I'm just gonna do the same on this side and then get the other one done and then we're done Careful, don't want to hurt the paint job. Alright, so I actually went to fit one of these. This one. And my bush literally just fell straight out. So, it was just way too loose in the hole. So I just gave it a little tack with a MIG. On both sides. Not enough to hurt the bush. Just so they stay put and don't fall out. Now I can put them back in the car. All right, so I've got springs under there. Everything is done up. I actually had some old Coney adjustable front shocks out of that car. So I chuck those in and yeah, it's ready. So now I have the super cool hot wires put back on. Lower it down and see how it looks. And then tomorrow I'll probably do the the fuel tank. I actually noticed that you can buy the fuel tanks from rare spares, um, but to get a new tank and center, it's like nine hundred dollars. So I might try um, just flush that out. I'll see what it looks like anyway. We'll just go from there. All right, I'm gonna chuck these wheels on and lower it down. Well, it's a little bit lower than what I wanted it to be so it's not looking good because by the time that motor and that turbo 400 goes in there that's going to come down um, a lot so it's very tough because the rear sits at that height I suppose once there's a full tank of fuel you know it could be an extra 60 kilos something like that just gonna have to wait and see, I suppose. Once the motor and box goes in, hopefully it's the same height. If not, I'll have to um, either lower the back more or um, change the front springs, which will suck. I forgot to put the front sway bar in, so I'm gonna do that, and then the front's done. Then I can do the fuel tank. All right, so I just dropped the fuel tank out of the car. Just undid the front of the straps got it out it's actually you can hear it it's actually full of fuel not full but there's a fair bit in there and a lot of um crusty stuff and this here that was the fuel sender um this thing here it's a little pin hanging out of it i think that's how it's meant to be okay so i'm gonna um Undo this, get a screwdriver and 
try and hit it and undo that. It looks very crusty. We'll take a look at it. But it, hopefully it's um, reusable and I can just clean it out and good to go. Alright, you guys are going to be first to see this. <laughs> oh my god. So what the hell is that? That is some crusty ass shit. I don't even know what the hell that would be. It's like more crusty than rust. Oh, here we go. Imagine if I just tried to truck fuel in this and try and use it. <laughs> Wouldn't have got very far. Oh my god. And inside it just looks like... Oh my god, it looks disgusting. Hopefully the camera can see in there. There we go, look at that. I'm going to pour all that into that and see what comes out of it. Okay, so I think I've just established that after hearing all that crusty stuff inside this thing and when you look in there, that is just like, I don't even know what the hell that is, it's just like rust and just absolute garbage. But this tank has that much stuff in it. When you move it around, I'll lift this up and you'll hear all the stuff that's inside of it. It's full of stuff. Super crusty. So there's no way in the world I'd ever get all that stuff out of that tank. Which means I've got to spend $900 and buy that tank from Rare Spares. Which will go on top of the budget. Now that budget's really getting stretched. <laughs> so it's been a few days. I've been waiting for a fuel tank to arrive. And it actually come in like two days. So it was 830 bucks for a brand new fuel tank from Rare Spares. Um, and I also bought a new fuel cap. Lockable, which I think was like $30. $35, something like that. I'm still waiting on the sender to come for this. Um, should be here soon, but I'm going to get this out of the box and we'll have a look. So that's the fuel tank. It just looks like a fuel tank. It's brand new. Really good. Come with um, the washer thing to lock the, the thing in when it comes. So, cool. But I'll have to wait until that um, sender comes before I can actually put it in back under the car. So, we will be back. Alright, so it's been about a week now. It's been a while, but I've done a lot of progress. So I've got my wheels, got my hubcaps. Haven't got the motor in yet, but I've got the motor right here. So, I've also got the fuel tank installed. Looks very neat under there, fresh, brand new and shiny looking. I've done all the hoses for it. So I've gone with, um, I bought these wheels off BCI wheels, a 15 by 7 and I went with a 215-65 tyre all around. So 15 by 7 all around and these are the uh, HX, HZ, I mean not sorry, HJ, HX hubcaps. Uh, the HQ ones are different. HQ ones have um, here's black, the line silver, vice versa. Pretty similar, but anyway. So I had to buy second hand ones of those too because rare spares don't sell them. Um, looks very neat. So the motor. So I just picked this up from Brad uh, last week and I just got caught up in working on the ute. And driving it. <laughs> it was very fun but now I'm gonna get stuck into this so I'll just put a new starter motor on just using old engine mounts because they look really good um, just use an old flex plate but it's in really good shape I did put an aeroflow P2 
pan on it. I just wanted one with it. it holds a little bit more oil volume. I'm going to try and reuse this um, fuel pump. I'm hoping it's going to work, but we'll find out anyway. Uh, Tim Laidler, thank you for donating these powder coated rocker covers. I do appreciate it a lot. It was very good of Tim to give those to me. And in here we have the super high performance roller rockers. So I bought the Yellow Terra adjustable roller rockers. Even though it's got a it's got a crane 286 cam, so it's just got a hydraulic cam. But I just bought the adjustable rockers because they didn't cost much more and you know, just in case they want to change a cam down the track or anything like that, which I probably won't, but um, yeah, so it's got flat top pistons, it's got the con rods out of um, the later blocks, the VN onwards, the, sh the better con rods with the bigger rod bolts, uh, standard 308 crank, 60th hour, we just honed it, um, heads have had 30th hour shaved off them, so the compression should be, we didn't end up zero decking it, so um, I just got 30th hour shaved off the heads, so compression, I guess, would maybe be, it'd be in the 10 somewhere, maybe 10 to something like that. So it's going to go alright. And over here in my collection of stuff, let's move that out of the way. So I ended up buying an Aeroflow distributor. Just because of the it's really good bang for buck. I just wanted a basic HEI Dizzy with an adjustable curve. That's really all I wanted for this car. Um, probably gonna near lock it out anyway. It has all different curves you can do on it. It's even got a rev limiter thing. So but I haven't really ever looked at that yet. And my Holly Carby. Got this from $900, I believe it was. They're actually really, they're not cheap anymore. Very expensive to get carburetors nowadays. Looks really pretty. Brand spanking new. 650 Holly. Mechanical secondary and manual choke. So. Very cool. So I'm going to chuck that on it soon. Get the dizzy um, sort of graft and installed, and get stuck into this thing. Next video is going to be me starting this thing, so I'm probably going to I might I might not even need a week, one week, maybe two weeks, and I reckon I'll have this thing running. So that's when the next video will be. So I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, for now I'll see you later.